All right, so my name is Derek Wolf, and um, I run Over the Fire Company and Wolf Creative Marketing. Um, I specialize in social media marketing, working with brands, uh, people like you, uh, some Fortune 500 companies, just coming up with strategies to utilize social media from a place that uh, we all know it's so important, but how do we use it? Like, how do we use it on a daily life? How are we using it? to obviously benefit our businesses. Um, really, where do we go from here? Because it seems to be so powerful, but how do we utilize that tool to go forward? Um, so, quick question. Who here has a social media account? Okay. What accounts are you on? Throw them out there. Instagram. Instagram, okay. Snapchat. Facebook. What else? Facebook. Anybody have YouTube? YouTube. Yeah. Sure. Twitter. Twitter. How often are you guys creating content for those social medias? Facebook, Instagram, daily. The other two are kind of pretty much. I like you. Okay. What else? How often are you guys doing it? How often would you like to be doing it? Every day? Once a day? Yeah, it should be. Daily. Exactly. It's not easy. I know everybody's really busy, like selling a product doing everything for social media, having a life, it's crazy. But at the same time, it is a great priority and I'm gonna give you guys just a few quick tips on how you're able to utilize that um, to just get that ball rolling right now uh, before we leave today. All right, so I specialize in Instagram and Facebook. I have YouTube, I have Twitter, all that stuff. But let's hone in on Instagram because it seems to have that it factor that everybody's really uh, striving towards. I think that everybody here should have a business account centered on their Instagram. How many people have an Instagram centered around their business? Okay, so there's a few of you. If you don't have one, you can pull out your phone right now and we can make you one. But what we're gonna do right before then is I'm gonna talk to you about, let's just set up after you've made your Instagram, you've made it whatever, Derek Wolf Real Estate, whatever you want to call it, let's go in and let's talk about your bio, which is my first tip, and then we're going to jump into a little bit about who I am and all of that stuff. All right, so first thing you see when you come to somebody's bio, who they are. Should be a no-brainer, but if you're going with business, I want to know what your name is, I want to know what business you're working for, I want to know where you're from, I want to know what you do for a living, if it's a business. I want to know it specifically what you do. Are you in high end real estate? Are you in flipping homes? Are you fire cook like what I do? Do you work with social media businesses for consulting? Link people in. Link in your real estate agency that you work with. Uh, link your partners. Link your business that you're working with. Use hashtags in that bio. One thing that I get asked all the time is how do you keep that bio um, like from not jumping down to another line? I actually do a whole course on talking about all those ins and outs and details. I have a two-part course. So at the end, I'll throw in my info, email me that. But we can get into some of the details of doing all of that. But your bio, your photo, everything is the first thing that anybody sees about who you are. And for me, I think it's important to understand why social media should be important. So I am 26, and I find social media to be my first place that I look to qualify somebody in what they're doing for their business. I go to a restaurant, first thing I do is go onto the Facebook page. Next thing I do is go onto their Instagram page. If I'm gonna work with a real estate agent, I'm probably gonna go onto their Instagram page. I'm gonna see what people are saying, what people are looking at, what are my friends that I trust saying about them on social media. Because the benefit of social media is also its downside. The benefit is you can say whatever you want and not have any repercussions. That's also its downside, but it gets real. And people are willing to be exactly, brutally truthful about how they feel about your business. And that's the people I want to work with, but the people that are able to pass that flag with flying colors. So, going with your bio, you want to know who they are, what you do, where they're from, contact information is really big. I have my, um, web, or my email uh, directly in my bio. People are, may not even click onto your website or anything else. They just want to know, how can I contact you? Linked website is really big. 
uh, if you have a personal website, if you have a link on one of the real estate agencies that you work with. Um, some other fun things that help. Emojis are really fun, people really like those. Um, adding hashtags, tagging other accounts, keeping things short. You only have like 250 characters. So just keep it short, keep it quick, say who you are, what you do, where you're from, and get right to it. But that's going to be a major break. A lot of people really like to know exactly who you are before they even get into talk, to interacting with you, looking at anything else. But, so that was just a very quick tip. However, like I said, my name is Derek Wolf. I run Wolf Creative Marketing, where I work with uh, a bunch of fun companies coming up with marketing solutions for their social media accounts. And then my fun side project uh, that's kind of turned into my main project is Over the Fire Cookie. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so I graduated from the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. I studied business analytics and marketing. Um, and I love it, I'm a data nerd. Uh, it really helps on social media because you can find what people like really quickly and read through the numbers. Statistics is your friend on there. Um, so I'm a social media marketer and influencer, and those are kind of buzzwords right now, but all that really means is I specialize in creating marketing strategies on social media. So what does Wolf Creative Marketing do? Just a little tip. I do social media consulting, so I'll work with people like you. I'll work with brands coming up with strategies. I do content creation advertising, so if I have a brand come to me and they want to do some form of content, I'll actually take the photos. I'll get out there doing the videos. Um, my wife and I are on that team. So we do a lot of that. I do SEO, uh, do online marketing. I have a background in website development. So I work on that for a lot of clients as well. And then I do social media analytics. So I get in using my um, apps that I'm able to use and look at statistics, see what people are saying about your accounts, and then go in and tell you, okay, when is the best time to be posting? where you should be posting, what you should be posting, what are your competitors doing, what is everybody else doing that's working, and how can you utilize that for your advantage and create it for yourself. So, all in all, I help your brand find its audience, which is the most important thing. We all want to have that big audience, but what we really want to have is an audience that just really likes you. They like what you're doing, they want to buy from you, they want to do everything that you basically tell them because they're interested in what you're doing every day. So I tested that theory out with Over the Fire Cookie. Um, so three years ago, I was working for an accounting firm doing statistical analytics. I got married, moved here to Nashville, graduated college, was working with an accounting firm with my best friend, and uh, I hated my life. <laughs> I hated it so much. Nothing wrong with accounting. It was just my, I was not in the right place. And uh, I love statistics, but I was so creative. I wanted to do something else. I come from a family of cooks. And uh, I, so, anybody like Netflix? Anybody watch Netflix? All right, going to Netflix, there's a show called Chef's Table. Uh, on the fourth episode, there's a chef called Francis Mullen. He's from Argentina. My best friend in college showed me this episode. It'll blow your mind because it blew my mind. I've watched it like 15 times. This guy goes out into the woods. He takes whole cuts of meat, leans it against the fire, and that's how he cooks. And I was just so blown away. I thought it was the coolest thing that anybody could ever do. So I came from a family of cooks. We, you know, we go camping and stuff, and all we have is hot dogs and hamburgers and whatever. But I never thought, oh my gosh, I could cook something great. Like, yeah, you could cook something really cool over an open pit fire. So, I went to REI in Brentwood, just down the street. I picked up a Camp Chef pop-over grill grate. My wife and I, we got a fire pit for our wedding present, and we got a, a DSLR camera. And so she was out there fiddling with the camera, and I bought some skirt steaks, and I made chimichurri and potatoes, and just follow the recipe online, and it was amazing. Like, it was, must have been beginner's luck because I just loved it way too much. And I decided, like, I was a pirate food maniac. I loved it to the point where I really hated social media. I made a social media account about it just because I thought, well, what the heck. So I was still working, and I'd come home, 5 o'clock, get out of my car, 
go into my backyard, start my fire, get the food ready, and we'd be cooking for dinner. We'd be taking photos. I was posting them on my social accounts. The next thing I knew, people were sharing them. I didn't know what's so, like, I don't know, watch Cat Siren just shared my photo, and I thought it was really cool. And so over the course of maybe a year and a half, it was crazy. I used the statistics, the statistics that I learned from hashtags, content, working with other influencers, and the next thing I knew, in a year and a half, I had over half a million followers. And it was a lot of fun. Then I was sitting on the beach with my dad, and my dad said, do you think you could do this full time? And I said, well, I'd love to get out of my job, so maybe, and he said, you will only be able to have a business if you treat it like a business. Do you think you can do this full time? I said, hell yeah. And I jumped. First asked my wife. But then I jumped. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the best decision I ever made. I've learned so much. I've cooked with some great cooks. You know, I've been all over the world cooking and hanging out with people and taking photos and all that fun stuff. But it put into a, a thought into my head. How powerful can influencing really be? Can it be powerful enough that I could create my own spice blend and sell it online? Yes. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, this, that's my spice. Um, chipotle garlic, it's, it's really good. That looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so why should I care about social media? I think I've kind of hit this topic a little bit, but it is really powerful. Sorry, Ron. Can I piggyback on you real quick? Yeah, yeah. And feel free to tell me if you're going to get to this later. Because the biggest thing that fascinated me about you and coming to this, and I even said to Liz, I'm like, and no offense to you, but I'm like, it's pictures of food. Everybody, yeah. all, that's everywhere. I mean, everybody posts a picture of their dinner. Why do you have 500,000 followers from well, pictures of food? That's a great question. Is that, are you going to talk about how you, how you got to there? Um, I can. I definitely can. Uh, to hit that point, uh, it was a lot. Well, actually, I'm going to come back to that. There's something I'm going to cover. So why, why should you care about social media? It's a great question. I think you should because it's powerful. So what is social media's purpose? Social media has its purpose. I wrote it down so I didn't say anything wrong about it. To connect you and your brand to an audience who is interested in what you are selling. Uh, so social media has its presence uh, for um, personalized aspects, um, but for a brand, for what you guys are actually selling, it's a platform for you to create an audience um, before they ever have to buy a product. Um, it's kind of revolutionary because I didn't even have a product to sell to my following except for the photos that I was posting until like six months ago. So I created a reach of people that were interested in what I was doing and everything that was centered around it before I ever even had a product. And that's what I think is important for social, uh, for social media for you guys, um, is it's a place where you can actually create that reach, you can create a community. It's, it's the new word of mouth. It's a new way for people to trust what, you, what somebody else is saying on social media um, to be interested in buying into your business. So. We kind of talked about some social accounts, Facebook and Instagram, um, they're photo video based, Twitter, text and photo based, um, you have YouTube which is video based, Snapchat which is photo and video based. Um, I mean they all can do a variety of things, they all have their expertise in specific things, they all overlap in d different things. Um, I have all of them, um, I think primary ones to really have is you need to have a Facebook even if people don't use it, I think it's extremely important to have one, um, especially for like reviews or um, it ranks really high on Google SEO for people that are interested in what's going on for you. I think Instagram is a no-brainer uh, because it's connected with your Facebook. Um, and then I definitely think Twitter is important um, and you can also have YouTube as well. And then Snapchat, Snapchat just depends on if that's something you enjoy or what's going on. But, yeah, I'm question answer. Yeah, there you go, man. Uh, why is Twitter important? Because I, I, yeah, the only time I ever go to Twitter is to follow comedians because they put funny, <laughs> they put funny one-liners up. Like, yeah, how does it help a business? I think the Twitter, um, the one benefit for Twitter is that it is word-based, um, so there's a lot more. You can get more like information 
to people that are interested in what's going on with you instead of just a photo or stuff like that. Because people on Instagram, people on Facebook, they can just read right through the caption or like look at the photo, read right through the caption and not even care. I think Twitter is a really great place where not everybody needs to have one, but if you find yourself or you want to be actively involved in a community that is text-based and staying up to date in news, I think staying up to date, I have another point that is going to interconnect with this, but um, keeping people in your followings interconnected with what's going on in Nashville, the housing community, the United States for the housing community, statistics on, you know, our prices high, our prices low. It's quick, instant information that people can get on board with um, without having to go through the rigmarole of some other social media accounts. Very fast. Being stat based, do you know, because I really don't want to do Twitter, but I will if I have to. Do you know if there's a lot of people using Twitter but don't use the other ones? Does that show anything like that? Or would I be fine to stay away from Twitter if I wanted to? I think Twitter, it depends. Twitter girls hide from Twitter. I mean, you can have a conversation right with somebody in real time. Is it really? Yeah. I was, Twitter always thought it was like, throw it out there and then just <laughs> really see it as a two-way street of conversation. But I don't know Twitter much. So. Well, so I, I'm relatively inactive on Twitter, especially because I focus on video and photo. Um, but it just depends on really, I think at the end of the day, when it comes to social media, I'd rather have people do one thing really well than do five things terrible. So I'd rather have you crush it on Facebook, crush it on Instagram. You know, if you can only post one thing, do it on one of those social accounts that you know you can do it really well for. Um, and I think that that's probably the most important thing. Yeah. I'm just going to ask, do you think having the other three, Twitter, YouTube, and Snapchat, contributed to your growth in Instagram and Facebook? I, th I think it did. Actually, the biggest thing that really helped me um, that, you know, I guess I, I didn't put it up there because it's not social media, but it's a website. Um, knowing and running SEO, understanding back end for a lot of website, um, having something that's social media is a platform base that people can come to and look at you and what you're doing, but your website is something like tangible, something where they can really see everything that you've created or talked about, or, you know, for me, like recipes or price that I'm saying like this is exactly what you need in your life for the holidays or whatever. I think that that was a really big uh, turning point for me because then I can interconnect it with pretty much all my other socials. Isn't YouTube a huge your SEO because they're Google and right? They so are. If you do YouTube videos you're going to pop up more. Yes. Great. Okay. Um, yeah there's I wish I was a little bit more involved and invested in YouTube. That's a, that's a goal for 2019. So stay tuned. Yeah. So as far as content like for do you recommend having like different content to post like on a daily basis or would you post like the same thing on like, both? Oh, are you asking what content or? Like would you post the same like picture, let's say on Instagram and Facebook on the same caption or would you come up with two separate? I do, I do uh, the same. Um, they're both so similar that you can cross over without really crossing any um, separate boundaries or like user guidelines or anything like that. They're obviously interconnected their own by Facebook, so um, I recommend connecting your accounts. So, yeah, sharing your cross. Um, really just know your brand, know your audience. Um, I mean, for you guys, for food, and I, I can talk about this, there's uh, one of the reasons why my food account grew like crazy. Um, I'm sorry. Um, know your audience, prioritize your time. It was like I was saying, just do one thing really well instead of trying to do all 50 things. I mean, I just, I do this for a living and I'm still trying to catch up with YouTube and Snapchat and everything else. It's just, I think it's better to prioritize your time and then find a way to interweave even more of what you're able to do as you're able to catch up with what's going on in your life and everything else. We have to have real life social media is not necessarily always real life. Um, but it is a great uh, tool. So, can't work for real estate. I just did a very quick 
kind of look at what's going on in real estate, uh, what's going on with people. I found Louis Palacio Real Estate. Um, he's in Miami. You can see, I had him in the beginning, but you can see he's the founder uh, of his realty group. He has exactly what he does. Um, he philosophy is he works with athletes and celebs, all that kind of stuff. The one thing I wanted to weed out is especially, um, I think that the one thing I'm trying to uh, keep y'all maybe steer clear from is keep it professional in some way. Like, um, there are some people that get on there and want to like make themselves look really cool and flaunt a lot of other things besides their real estate career. And I think people see that. Um, so just keep it professional, keep it something that you're interested in, keep your audience authentic. Um, he has his contact information. The Rehab Life is a couple um, that is actually doing some house flipping. So they got a lot going on there. They have a lot, of, they have great engagement. Um, they're really interesting. I'm sure they're following them right after that. Um, so, this is where I'm going to dive in a little bit more in detail about some more fun tips, and I'm going to answer a couple more questions. But, how do I stand out from the crowd? I think is probably the biggest question. So, how did I stand out from the rest of the crowd? Um, one thing that I did to stand out from the rest of the crowd is I picked a vertical, I picked a niche market. Um, so when I got on three years ago, there was a ton of people that were cooking with traders. There were a ton of people that were barbecuing. There was no one cooking over open fire. I didn't know if it was going to be all that successful, but I was just able to find out. I was benchmarking some of the other people what they're doing. I was looking at how are they, how are they stylizing their photos? How are they creating things? What is engaging their audience? What are people interested in? And I was able to say, okay, this is what I do. This is all I have in my tool and you know, at my uh, ability to cook with. How can I make that work for what I'm doing and get people interested in what I'm doing by not having to reinvent the wheel every freaking time? And so I started doing it like crazy. I mean, I today, right after this, I'm gonna do um, a Harasa pork chop over open pit fire. I'm gonna do a video recipe. You'll see it posted later today. You know, like I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna have another, uh, I'm gonna do uh, shashuka on Friday. You know, I was just constantly getting after it and taking photos and seeing what was working and how can I utilize that to stay at the cutting edge and even push it to the next level. So how might you be able to do that? Benchmarking new ideas, all that fun stuff is really great. Getting out there, seeing what other real estate agents are doing, what other people are doing, seeing what is the content that they're posting that's getting a lot of engagement, how are they saying it, how are they viewing it, how are they taking photos, and understanding what is going on in the marketplace, and then being able to take the minute things and see the details and do it yourself. Um, but I think the bigger, bigger thing for you guys to stand out is a finding a niche market. Um, Few ideas I have uh, is create your page, make it about real estate, but also have something on the side on that page that talks about the look of food in Nashville and staying up to date with what's going on in the greater Nashville or Brentwood or Franklin area. Um, staying up to date uh, with home rehab or how's the homes that you're involved with or, or having something other than just real estate tacked on to what you guys are doing because it'll make you stand out if you get really involved in food scene. And then people will be interested and be coming to you for food, but then they'll be like, oh man, you do real estate too. You add that little real estate at the end, and people will be like, you know what? We've been trying to come to Nashville. We've been visiting here for a while, thinking about retiring here. Let's just work with you. And so I think that I found that really easily because I, I created a niche market for people that were interested in open fire cooking, campfire cooking. They were interested in what was going on. Um, they were interested in what was going on for live fire cooking, um, and I was able to capitalize on that because there was a lot of barbecuers and grillers and backyard cookers and all that stuff that wanted to find new and interesting and unique ways of <coughs> seeing the same dishes done. Um, yeah. So your example for the real estate website was a guy who, what I took away from the very brief thing you just showed of him was it's about him. Uh, I talked to somebody a year ago, basically trying to get coached on this, and I'm, I'm, my motivation is terrible, so I kind of followed through with the plan. But he was like, it's not about you. One out of every five posts should be about you. Make it about Nashville or whatever. Right. You know, like you're saying, make it, you know, find something about Nashville, and then throw yourself in every now and then. But don't, don't make yeah. it about selling yourself. Right. 
Which is true. I mean, nobody's gonna be like, oh, look at this hat balding guy. Let me put it on his <laughs> picture. You know, like what I've noticed about Derek's account is you rarely ever see Derek in it. Yeah. At the like, end of my videos, you are seeing more. But I do think that's like keep the photo of you, um, that kind of stuff. You're still a primary portion of it, but. Um, People, people tack on to why you do something, not exactly what you do or how you do it. So when you started this, you didn't do it with the intent of selling anything, right? You did yeah. it as just, it'd be fun to get followers that watch what I do. Honestly, I, I started it because I liked cooking outside, I love statistics and growing social media, and I was just curious about the project. It became interesting because it was like, I've never, no, I didn't feel like any, there's a ton of accounts out there, but how did you conquer social media? And I have yet to figure all of the details out, but there's definitely a few Those that content, really right? help. Yeah, so good content. content. Um, we'll talk about some of the uh, ways to get that as well, but like um, having a blending of stuff that are both, that's both interesting, that is personal, um, being able to just be involved with your, your community, commenting, liking, saying up to date with stuff. That's why I say like just do one thing really well because I mean doing Instagram in and of itself for some people is a full time job. Um, which I still think is slightly funny, but at the same time like, you know, they're getting results, they're seeing opportunity and it's a new vertical for the market. Um, so I think that that's, that's really important. But I do, I do agree with you. Um, having that blending of getting it even bigger Think bigger, think Nashville. Don't even just think real estate, but think things that are connected with real estate and maybe your audience is, it's a little easier to connect with you than it is to just be like, oh, you're a real estate agent. Be like, oh man, he's really invested in food. He's really invested in what's going on in the country music world down here. He's really invested in what's going on with everything that's going on in Nashville, and it's able to get you to connect with people from a little bit more personal level, and then you're able to throw in the personal side of things. Yeah. Uh, the two-part question, number one, look at the, your account, almost every picture, you're probably every picture is food, right? right. So, on, on our business pages, where we have properties, you know, they're listed, or ones that we're buying, or, you know, I guess I'm trying to figure out the balance between what you're saying right now, and where your account is, which is nothing but food. Right. So, I mean, should mine be nothing but houses and property? <laughs> no, okay. no. So, okay, maybe maybe the one thing that I've glossed over um, is the fact that, like, my account is solely on food uh, and it has me in it. But I think that I, it's taken me three years to be able to be able to only post food and do only stuff like that. Um, I, at the beginning, there was a lot of personalized aspects to it. There was a lot of people getting connected. And then they got really invested in food, what was, what was cooking, they wanted to know how to cook it and stuff like that. So I think one thing that I would definitely strive for is I would have social media accounts for you guys that not only focus on what you're doing, um, but they have a personalized touch. I really liked what you were saying on the road, like every four or five posts, you have something that's personal that's happening with you, but it is business business related or you know a date night out or something like that. But there, the hard thing for social media is there's only a few people that are going to have hundreds of thousands of followers, and most of those people are going to be people that are driving around in Lamborghinis doing crazy stuff where they're. You know, I just happen to be a, a lucky person that able to cook in my backyard and able to have a lot of followers. I don't think you guys should be striving to have tens and thousands of followers, because it doesn't matter. You can have tens of thousands of followers and have no influence, and there are plenty of accounts that are out there like that. You can also have a couple thousand, a couple hundred, and have way more influence in your local area because everybody that follows you not only trusts you, but they're in the same area and they're staying up to get in what you're doing. So I wouldn't strive to have hundreds of thousands of followers when in reality, the important thing is keeping it in a way that is authentic, that's respectful to your community, but also able to be invested in what's going on um, and not have tens of thousands of followers that 
you know, because people can go out and just buy from a person. So, um, kind of watch the um, I have a question. Yes. Other than the content, so looking at specifically Facebook and Instagram, what's kind of the the natural or the technical thing you're going to do to create more clients? Is it like so? Is it hashtags on uh, Instagram or like what? What's getting people? I mean, I know the, probably the best way is your friends share and those friends share, right? Is that pretty much how it? Would Snowballs, or is there something you can do to help that along a little bit? So I, yes, there are definitely some nitpicky tips and tricks. Wait, pay for a class? <laughs> no, I can give you one right now. Hashtags are huge. Local hashtags are huge. Variety of hashtags are big. I know that, like, oh my class, I want you guys to come and work with me if you want to. But at the same level, like, social media is such a crazy. Thing. I understand, like, let's do it today. Like, I want you guys to be successful today, not have to pay everything to figure it out. Hashtags are really big. Quality content at the end of the day is really going to be what's what's most important. The hard thing for that is it just takes time to figure out what is something and how is it, right? what is a way to stylize, create, and capture content that would get my audience engaged or most engaged with what's going on. I mean, it took me a while. I had plenty of fails on figuring out what I was doing. Um, and you sort of went backwards, you know what I mean? Because usually you, people start off with a business like real estate. Right. And then they what, uh, would attach something that they love or their hobby or whatever, create something interesting outside of real estate to attract an audience. Right. So you did it in reverse, where yeah. you bull. You attracted an audience, you cooked over an open fire, and then you were like, boom, I've got this audience now, now I'm going to bring in the business. Exactly. And I don't think that always is exactly how everything works. Um, but being able to see from this perspective, see and work with clients to get them to be doing stuff that's successful, I think where you start is by building your business along with your brand and keeping some level, keeping the authenticity level there. Um, but some ways that you can stand out is having the sides, like something on the side that gives people interested in what you're doing. Um, even more than just real estate, food, like I've said before. Um, but yeah, so doing the small things right is really important. So having, um, you get 30 hashtags on Instagram, you don't have to use all 30 hashtags, but just be creative. Um, just post as much as you can think of getting people using hashtags that you think people would be interested in. Tag other people or brands or stuff that you think would be interested in what's going on. Um, getting featured by brands, getting featured um, by other companies uh, really helped in my success for growth. Um, I think that that's work together. Um, I don't know where you're at with that, but I think that working together, featuring like, you know, you went out to dinner with, uh, or you were hanging out and doing lunch with um, one of your good friends in real estate or all that kind of stuff. I always said, you know, like, the tides rise, all the boats rise kind of thing. So, like, working together on social media has really helped me. I have, like, this group of about 15 other influencers that were constantly out there saying, you guys should, you're interested in fire cooking, you're interested in camp, camping, you should be following the fire cooking. Um, and then I do the same thing for a lot of other people. Yeah? For the hashtags, is there a preference or does it make a difference how short or long it is? I just keep it readable. Um, I so, know a lot of the, on, I was just on Instagram looking at other realtors and I mean, it's so long I can't even, I don't even know what it says. And I think that that's a big, like, it four yeah. Times. <laughs> I don't know the last time I typed in a whole sentence for a hashtag, but if I'm looking for a realtor, I'm just, for hashtag realtor or hashtag Nashville realtor or um, using your location is really just a variety. Yeah. So to piggyback off what she just said, if you do a hashtag and you see that you're the only post, because it shows the number of posts that have the hashtag in it. Yeah. If you're number one, don't use that hashtag because <laughs> nobody else is going to see it. Hashtags are important because you can follow hashtags and if somebody uses it, it pops up on your feed. And so yeah. if, if you see that it's 100,000 people who use that hashtag, that's your golden ticket. It's just, it, it's a really great place to start. Um, 
Think out captions, adding your info at the end of captions. I think if it's even even if you do something that isn't necessarily related to realtor or to realty, I would have inside your caption be like, I also do real estate. Um, here's my contact information. Here's my website information. And I think that people might. I've noticed that when I'm able to tag my website, when I'm able to get people other ways to get invested in what I'm doing, they're, they are going out and looking at it. They're searching for it. They're getting involved in those other sites as well. Um, another thing is editing your images. Um, so if you're going to be posting something, make sure it's like one of the best photos that you're able to take at that session. Uh, don't do blurry photos or things that you, know, you don't really know. A great tool, Snapseed. Uh, it's an app. Uh, it's almost as impressive as Photoshop um, on the editing side of photos. Um, so being able to use that, you can sharpen things, you can contrast and add brightness, take down brightness, you can pinpoint specific areas that may be really low lighting and you're able to get it up so you don't have like you know a low light area and then the rest of the photo is really great. Um, so I highly recommend it. All right. Uh, one more question. Yeah. Video editing. I know that's not. Yeah, in shot. Easy. What's that? In shot. Video editing. N or I N. I N S H O T. Um, that's literally all I use. It's awesome. Um, and do you just use a phone for video or? Yeah. So all my video recipes are done on this phone. Yeah. Um, you can do it on DSLRs if you want to, but. At least for Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that, pretty much everything. Not everything, but it's mostly not. If you're on YouTube, though, that's probably on the camera. Yeah? Is consistency important on like filters? So like, if you're going to choose a specific filter to use, should all of your pictures be in that same filter, or should it be photo dependent? Um, I steer clear of filters. Okay. Um, I just use Snapseed. Um, so I just try to keep it, keep it clear on like, just like looking as if I just pulled it off of a really nice camera, um, which I mean, those you know, iPhones are pretty amazing. Um, so if you want to do filters, you're more than welcome to. I just think that nowadays people are just really interested in seeing what your content is and not having to, you know, squint their eyes at filters or seeing other things like that. I will tell you, people. I definitely, I, I like to renovate my houses. I. I People love, I think, picture in a house. They seem to love the filters. I get way more likes on my Instagram with the filter. Well, yeah, but I'm sure it's dependent on the medium, right? It probably is, and that's yeah. one thing. Just pay attention. What is, what are you doing that is getting a lot of engagement? And then be willing to test it out. That's what I did. I mean, test it out. If it was the filter, adding other filters. If the next photo does even amazing, you you're you're able to narrow it down. Um, in stats, we always say that correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation. Just because two things happened at the same time doesn't mean that they both interacted to make it happen. Um, so just find a way to start slowly narrowing it down, figure out um, exactly what it is. Is it the filter? Was it just because you took a photo with you know a family that was um, buying a new home and you had a great caption in it? Um, I think those are all just important to start narrowing down, but test it out and just get out there. Um, my last thing, and I get uh, this, these questions a lot, is posting strategy. Um, depending on where you're living, I think it does matter what times you're posting, especially if you're following is Nashville based. If you're posting at 3 a.m., you're probably not going to get a lot of people interested. Um, but if you're posting at 8 a.m., post at times. <laughs> Most of the times when people are most likely to be looking at their phone. Um, 11 o'clock, right before they go to lunch. 7.30, well, maybe not 7.30, 8.30, right when they get into the office. Um, I post at 4.30, right before they leave. I posted at 6 o'clock, right, right when they get home. Um, you can post at 8 p.m., you know, like right after dinner time. But posting at times that people are the highest likelihood of them looking at their phones, especially if it's a location based. Um, but I think that the biggest thing is just be consistent. Um, if you're posting at 8 a.m., 
or you're posting at you know 11:30, whatever. Just start posting at that time. Just, just stay consistent. It takes slow, steady steps to get exactly where you want to go. Um, I think consistency is more important. Um, try and post at least one time a day. Um, don't overpost, uh, but if you have good quality content or you're cooking a lot like I am, or you have a lot of stuff going on, or you, you're working with a lot of clients, even save posts for the next day. Um, just be consistent, stay in your groove. Um, pre plan posts, uh, Hootsuite, Icona Square, there are a few other ones. Um, these are really great for working professionals. Uh, you know, social media, posting on social media at 30 is probably not a huge priority, but you still want to be invested in it, you still want to do it right, get on Hootsuite or get on somewhere that is able to pre-plan posts. Uh, you get your, your photo up there, you're able to write in your caption, all you have to do is you get a notification, you click on it, and then it'll copy right over to your Instagram, and then you're able to post it. Um, there's not any automatic way of posting, um, because Instagram doesn't allow that, but, this is a great pre-planning tool to do things uh, working. Uh, and just the more quality posts, the more quality audience, which is what we've already talked about. But uh, if you want more in-depth help, I have a two-part class. Um, it just goes into, it, it won't tell you every little detail that you need to know. It'll tell you how can you be successful with what you have going on, because Instagram changes every day. I learn things new every day, and things change and edit and all that stuff, so I'm not gonna tell you it's gonna be like exactly everything that's going on, but you know what? It'll sure get you exactly where you wanna go. I've worked with plenty of clients that have great social media success, they've done really well, and honestly, I do think that social media is important because it creates an influence. It gets people invested, and if anything else, millennials really like it, so. Um, yeah, that's my uh, that's my email. Um, so reach out. I'd love to talk to you guys. But I'm gonna open up the floor to questions or anything else that you guys are really thinking about. Um, fire away. Yeah. How important are stories? I think stories are great. Um, the one benefit for stories I didn't talk about. I do talk about it in my class, but the benefit for stories is that you're able to add links, um, whereas on Instagram. Um, Facebook, you are able to embed links, but stories are the only place on Instagram besides IGTV that you can add a clickable link. The beautiful thing about stories is that it's instantaneous, so staying invested, having things that are interested. I don't think it's necessarily impossible to out overdo stories, but just having a couple a day or all that, they're really, they're great tools. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Icona Square for pre-planning posts. Is there a similar app for uh, emails? That is a great question. Let me think about it. Okay. What other questions do you all have? What, so what kind of stuff do you go over in your class? Like, are you going to make it specific to the individual? Or yeah. You, okay, so like, tell us, that, are you going to go over a hashtag? Absolutely. So I'll analyze your tools, I'll analyze your accounts and profiles, I'll understand what's going on in the current world of you know the genre that you're working out of. And then I'll work with you to create a customized plan to tell you all the ins and outs of hashtags, caption design, Facebook integration, if you, wherever you really want to go. Uh, and I'll give you the tools and tips and tricks um, for posting. Uh, for content that I think would be a driving, getting certain specific content that I think would be driving forces to get higher engagement. Um, what are some of the competitors or people that are top in Nashville that are in your genre that are doing well um, and showing them what they're doing well and finding ways for you to be creative. Um, so that's why I do I work on personalized level. So you develop the brand? I help them develop the brand. I help you find your audience. So it's the class, it's one-on-one, -on -one, more like coaching. Yep. One. Okay, is this uh, online? I can do it in person, I can do it online. Um, Are you located in Nashville? Or? Yeah, 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 actually it's not too far away. So, um, coffee shops, the well has great coffee. So, stuff there, all of the above. Um, and it is separated in two parts because they're about an hour, 
hour to an hour and a half, depending on questions and comments and stuff like that. So separate it out because it's longer than five dollars. Yeah, it is um, four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Class, mm -hmm. you'll walk away from that class, and you'll be able to do everything well on social media, and you can email me and ask me questions for the rest of the time. Give us a receipt for Rob. Say what? <laughs> Give us a receipt. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, what do you have like uh, coaching, you know, sessions that you do like personal sessions where you have one on ones? Yeah. Yeah, I can customize a plan to do something. Really, really anything. These are my pre-planned stuff. Okay. Um, but otherwise, not. 